Hey guys, Niffler here and welcome to my weekly build guide featuring today my Crit Staff Slayer for 2.4 Atlas of Worlds. You wanna beat the endgame and not play lame Vortex? Well, here's a guide on my favorite melee weapon type, the Staff. Staves got the most powerful nodes on the left side of the passive tree, allowing you to play crit while still stacking massive amounts of life. In addition, we got the unique ability to generate endurance charges on melee crit, together with the frenzy charges from Blood Rage and Hegemony's era providing power charges, your character turns into a Christmas tree of buffs. But without further talking, let's get right into the gem setup. Your main skill depends on your personal playstyle. You can choose between all tier 1 melee gems as we are not skilled exclusively for a certain attack. And I will present you the advantages of the top 3. You always want to link increased critical strikes, increased melee physical damage, increased area of effect and faster attacks. Then either reduce duration and earthquake if you choose to use the best melee skill of the last meta, which is still tier 1 even after the nerfs. The advantage of this skill is its amazing AoE clear and very high overkill damage due to the aftershock. Overkill damage is very beneficial to our Slayer passive Endless Hunger, providing 20% of the overkill damage leeched as life. Another option would be linking Multi-Strike and Sweep. Sweep's bonus lies in its passive knockback chance, keeping the monsters at a safe distance and generating your power charges very quickly, as Hegemonies has a chance to generate power charges on knockback. And lastly, Multi-Strike and Ground Slam. Ground Slam allows you to stay far away from the mobs and clear a cone in front of you instead of a whole 360 degree AoE. Its implicit 25% reduced enemy stun threshold and increased stun duration keeps monsters from attacking you as they're almost permanently getting stunned. But Multi-Strike Ground Slam also requires a little more skill as you have to position yourself to get only attacked from one side. If monsters approach you from multiple directions, your three slams will be split up. Regardless what main skill you choose, you're always in need of a movement skill. In our case, Fall Link, Leap Slam, Faster Attacks, Fortify and Blood Magic. I chose to use no golem in this build, as they are dead most of the time anyways and with the separate boss rooms on every single map in patch 2.4, the golem pulls the boss's aggro while you're zoning in directly onto you every single time. For auras and buffs, I'm using Hatred, the cold damage added to your attack will shatter enemies and avoid multiple on death effects, like crabs respawning or our beloved porcupines exploding into spikes. Blood Rage increased duration provides bonus attack speed, life leech and generates frenzy charges. The degen should be easily outleached and regenerated. For your last buff, you could either simply use Herod of Ash for some bonus damage and not to forget the nice looks. You could also run an offensive blasphemy setup with vulnerability or assassin's mark, a defensive blasphemy setup with enfeeble or temporal chains or even arctic armor for some bonus defense. Lastly, we got standard cast no damage taken setup with a model call increased duration taking advantage of your passively generated endurance charges. You can also add in a molten shell for some bonus armor or arctic breath for some chilled ground. Choose wisely because I always end up a little socket starved with a Kaom's heart equipped, which leads us to the gear section of this guide. The core unique for this build is the Hegemony's Era Judgment Staff. Nice physical DPS, decent crit chance and the unique ability to generate power charges on melee knockback makes it almost impossible to drop a better rare staff in a temporary leak. As soon as you got a 5 link or 6 link Hedges ready, take advantage of plus 500 life from Kaom's Heart my personal favorite for any two-hander build. As always, use any rare chest piece or even tabula rasa until you can afford this. The last unique I recommend for this build is for our helm slot, Abyssus. This helmet is doubling the DPS of most melee crit builds with 40 to 60 flat fizz and up to amazing 225% critical strike multiplier. Try to get a close to 40% increased physical damage taken roll but after all, with 50% reduced reflect taken from Slayer, the Endurance Charges, Fortify and Immortal Call setup, this drawback had no impact on my gameplay at all. For Jewelry, focus on the standard Life and Resist, especially on your belt. 
best in slot are diamond rings with accuracy and flat fizz, a rustic sash with as much resist and life as possible and an amulet with crit multiplier, flat fizz and crit chance. For boots, also nothing spectacular, movement speed, life and resists. I chose to wear rare gloves though, as we are already using 3 uniques without any resists. I found it hard to cap out everything using stuff like Maligaros or Facebreaker. Attack speed and accuracy are nice together with standard life and resists. And don't forget to get Mana Leech on at least one piece of gear. It's hard to find it on jewelry with all the other mods on, so often it's best to simply craft it onto your gloves with Haku. For flasks, the unique Alliance Raw Granite Flask is pretty nice for the knockback, generating power charges quickly and bonus damage. The new Witchfire's Brew Stipnite Flask adds some defense in boss fights with the Smoke Cloud plus bonus DPS with the level 21 Voln on use. Taste of Hate is probably never out of meta, and you can even use roomies because you can block with staffs. Pick a flask pool according to your budget and don't forget to have removal for the annoying status elements like frozen and curses. Bleed immunity while leeching might make a staunching flask obsolete though. What brings us to the passive tree? I will just go over the keynotes very quickly and as always you find my gear and passive tree in the guide compendium linked in the description below. Starting at the duelist we pick up the standard master of the arena, art of the gladiator and destroyer together with all efficient life nodes. Traveling to the marauder area we pick up the sign life wheel on the way and here same story, two hander nodes plus life. For leveling I would recommend to go for resolute technique and only skill the general two hander nodes so you can play with whatever you find. Only later, when you got a staff and enough accuracy, you wanna respec out of resolute technique and into the crit staff clusters. Disembowing, smashing strikes, blunt trauma, serpent stance and blunt instrument. Because you're always lacking dexterity on the left side of the tree, instead of grabbing a plus 30 node, we get versatility and precision, which additionally grant you much needed accuracy rating. In terms of ascendancy points, we grab Headsman, mainly for the reduced reflect damage taken, but of course the increased AoE is also nice to have. Traveling through Bane of Legends, which is very powerful especially after the Shaper was added together with a lot of high HP bosses. The last 4 points are used for Endless Hunger, the high crit DPS provides some very nice overkill leech and lastly Brutal Fervor, provides us with bleed and stun immunity. For bandits, I chose Normal Oak for life, Cruel Aramir for the passive node and Merciless Kraton for the frenzy charge. To come to a conclusion, this build combines a very high life pool with a DPS of over 200k+. The high area of effect allows for a fast clear speed and a 20% culling from the ascendancies also makes this a good boss killer. To generate all charges passively and have a multi-layered defense with fortify, endurance charges, immortal call, absurd leech raids and a constant freezing and stunning of the screen. But with crit builds in general, they can be quite expensive to gear. Fortunately you have the chance to level with resolute technique and a flexible weapon choice until you can farm some currency. Overall my experience is a very positive one. That's it from my side for today, stay safe and thanks for watching, for more Path of Exile content feel free to subscribe to my channel where you will find weekly build guides and training tips. I hope you guys enjoyed and hope to see you next time.